space age anniversary of the October Revolution, from the space orbit to the deck of the legendary ship. Heroes from different generations. The first commissar of the Aurora, Alexander Pelishev, is again at the historic gun that fired the salvo on October the 25th, 1917, at the taking of the Winter Palace. Just like in 1917, a thundering salvo rumbled across the city. multiplied a millionfold by the roar of spaceships rocketing skywards. And now a new breakthrough in space conquest. emptiness of space. For this film is about a great feat of Soviet science, the victory of spaceman Pavel Belayev and Alexei Leonov. Man leaves ship in space. This film was made possible through the participation and consultation of research institutes and organizations which took part in the actual launching of the spaceship Voskhod 2. Scenario by Rapchikov, produced by Kosenko, camera by Athanasiev, Rafikov, Sugorov and Shumov. Sound recorded by Aipov. Moscow Popular Science Film Studio. The Soviet spaceship Vostok was the first ever to orbit the Earth with a man on board. The Aurora proclaimed a new social epoch in human history, and the Vostok opened up the space era to humanity. is a huge one, weighing over six tons with the last stage of the launching rocket. A sphere over two meters in diameter, equipped with 300 different instruments. Altogether, six Vostok satellite spaceships were launched into orbit about the Earth. When the flight is over, the Vostok returns to Earth plunging through the dense layers of the atmosphere in which even meteors burn up. Roaring sheets of fire can be seen through special heat-resistant glass. The surface temperature of the ship reaches 10,000 degrees. The astronaut can land inside the ship or he can be catapulted. This is the world's first passenger spaceship, Yuri Kagarin's. It landed on the steps near Saratov. Another landing on the Volga. German Titov has just landed. Spaceship was stopped too. All burnt and black from the fiery descent from the atmosphere, but safe and sound. Andrian Nikolaev, 
came down in the stone steps of Kazakhstan. The flight is over, but Andrian hates to leave his boss off free. Valentina Nikolaeva Tereshkova. Like the other boss stocks that have circled the Earth, hers too can be used again for new launches. The boss stock space vehicle has been called a wonder of science and engineering, and justly so. It's the space symbol of the 20th century. But science never stands still. This is a new ship, the multi-seat piloted Boss Hod, a great improvement over earlier vehicles. It's capable of carrying a whole crew. On October the 12th, 1964, it carried an engineer, a scientist, and a doctor on its first trip into space. Vladimir Komarov, Konstantin Vertistov, and Boris Yegorov. This new ship makes it possible to solve new problems in space research. The problem of a walk in space was no longer science fiction, but had become a routine undertaking on the program. It took Alexei Leonov and Pavel Belyaev five years to prepare for their Voskhod 2 flight. The walk into space means to step into a vacuum. But there is no such deep vacuum here on Earth. So, an artificial one was constructed for the two spacemen. A thermal pressure chamber. The cabin of the spaceship was wheeled into this chamber, which resembles an underground town. And this was the first training session of its kind. Leonov and Belayev experienced the deep vacuum of outer is also the extreme cold of the void in this chamber. The only thing lacking is weightlessness. The I have orders to close the hatches of the chamber. From the control panel, commands are given to the spacemen to enter the cabin of their ship, and then comes an order to the machine department. What is a vacuum? How do high altitudes threaten human life? On the Earth, the human body has an internal pressure that perfectly balances the outside atmospheric pressure. As the altitude increases, the outside pressure falls off rapidly, while the internal pressure remains the same. This causes a disruption in gas exchange, which consists in oxygen being taken by the blood and carbon dioxide being released. Breathing stops and blood circulation comes to a halt. At 20 kilometers altitude, oxygen starvation paralyzes the cells of the brain and the blood begins to boil at ordinary body temperature. Life and a vacuum are two things that cannot go together. Yet, we have to learn to live and work in a deep vacuum. Kevin pressure unity. Humidity 37, close to 40. Temperature 20. Ascent to altitude 37. Velocity at maximum. Watch pressure in the cabin. Start minus five minutes. 
Set tape recorder. Full volume. VKU outside. Feeling fine. Ready for takeoff. Altitude 30, 36, 37. Hold the pad. Separation effective. Close viewing ports. Put on gloves. Check white glove. Watch left glove. An opening valve of cabin simulator to balance pressure. Pressure in airlock going up. Exit from the cabin atmosphere to the deep vacuum and code of space will take place through an airlock. The process of locking on rivers with dams is done this way. A ship enters a lock and together with the water delivered to the chamber rises to the next level or is lowered to the next level. The same principle is used in leaving submarines underwater. And now it's being used to get out into space. The cabin air of the spaceship is delivered to the lock and pressure is balanced. The spaceman enters the air lock, which is then depressurized. The spaceman can now simply walk out into the deep vacuum of space. Ready for opening of hatch. Helmet is tight, gloves on, feeling fine, ready for exit. An opening hatch of cabin simulator. Begin exit. Is the film camera on? And crossing the edge. I'm settled in airlock. I'm taking over control. Hatch of cabin simulator is closed. Get ready for opening the hatch of airlock. I'm opening hatch of airlock. Hatch of airlock is open. Get ready for exit. Ready for exit. I'm out as far as the waist. The void of space is a dead and rough world. In the vast expanses of space, our Earth is but a tiny bit of dust. But man has ventured forth and will conquer the universe. Everything is strange and unusual in this new world. There's no support, no top, no bottom. Everything is weightless. Orientation is lost. The vacuum is dangerous. Man in orbit about the Earth is confronted with a hostile environment, belts of radiation, a solar wind, and solar storms. Outer space is not only a hazardous vacuum, but also a mysterious state of weightlessness. Neither vacuum nor weightlessness are known on Earth, but both are created artificially in an airborne laboratory. Carrie Brown aircraft is a mock-up of a spaceship cabin. Vilayev and Leonov are in their seats. Weightlessness sets in when the plane flies in a parabolic flight path. Within a few seconds, Leonov has to leave the cabin for an airlock. The extremely complicated experiment has begun. The first exit for the airlock in a state of zero gravity. The lock has been passed. Leonov is floating about in a pool of weightlessness. The aircraft again goes into a parabolic curve and again zero gravity is produced.
Leono is learning to work in a state of weightlessness. He takes the camera off the bracket, which is what he will have to do in space. Now the time has come to rehearse the operation of returning to the cabin. Like a guiding star, the lifeline brings Leono back to the airlock. There are still other barriers to an exit into outer space. Space medicine and space biology have worked out a methodology of training the spaceman for flights in the cabin of a spaceship. Now for the first time, the spaceman has to leave the ship and step out into open space. The first one to do this was Alexei Leonov. How would he react mentally when he entered this new and mysterious world? Would he lose courage? Wouldn't he be fearful of falling, afraid of losing orientation, the fear of losing touch with the last link, the ship? of scientists. A hidden camera follows his every action for the glass windows of viewing ports. Scientists are worried that his reason and willpower might be paralyzed by the sight of a fantastic ocean of void, that ancient terrestrial instincts would clash in this world where everything is so unearthlike. No weight, no support, no air, no orientation. Psychologists know of cases when a person after a long stay in a closed room comes out into the open and is mentally disabled. It's too much for the mind. Alexei Leonov undergoes a special training program to overcome this so-called psychological barrier and to develop spatial courage. the observations of Leonov in the cabin simulator. Excellent results were obtained after training on the centrifuge and the space chamber, in the zero gravity pool, and on other special training devices. Now it's time to test the psychological preparedness of Leonov to face the void of space. After a long stay in the silence and isolation chamber, Alexei Leonov is put in a plane and sent skywards. How will he react to this test? He is not alone, though. An experienced instructor goes along. Everything is fine. The psychological barrier is surmounted. <laughs> 